Now let's look at special cases. As you know, in many parts of algebra we have special cases and usually they have to do with there being a lot of solutions on the one side and no solutions on the other. And these two cases we're going to look at right now are just the same also as the special cases that you have seen and remember from solving systems of equations. Let's go ahead and graph our inequality. The left part is x, the absolute value of x plus 1, excuse me, means our vertex is moved 1 to the left to negative 1, 0. Dilation is 1. And here is our beautiful absolute value graph. The right side is the constant function of negative 5. In other words, a horizontal line that is at negative 5. Now our inequality states that the red part should be greater than or equal to negative 5. Now guess what, you guys? We have the entire part of the red graph above negative 5. In other words, our solution set is x such that x is an element of the real numbers. In other words, all real numbers and in interval notation we would just say from negative infinity to positive infinity. All numbers that we could even think of and then even some more are all part of our solution set. And now in this other case, let's graph the red part. Absolute value of x minus 1 this time means the vertex gets moved to the right to positive 1, 0. Dilution, dilation again the same as the parent function. and negative 3 is our second part, the horizontal line going through negative 3. But this time the red part is supposed to be less than the blue line. We can see that that doesn't happen anywhere. Nowhere is a red graph of the absolute value function less than negative 3. And that means that we have no solution. No solution. Now let's move on to absolute value inequalities in two variables. Y is greater than 1 half the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3. Our vertex is at positive 2 and 3. Our dilation is 1 half. In other words, we go 1 up, 2 to the right, 1 up, 2 to the right, 1 up, 2 to the right. And the same, 1 up, 2 to the left, 1 up, 2 to the left, and so on. Now, before you graph your line, remember that we are talking about an inequality with the inequality symbol greater than, and that means that our line has to be dashed. Our line is going to be dashed. It's not going to be a solid line. And the greater than bit means that the part that we're shading is above the line. Remember that from Algebra 1? Excellent. Okay, let's go to our next inequality y is less than or equal to negative the absolute value of x plus 1 and the whole thing plus 5. Our vertex is at negative 1 and positive 5. Now our negative sign outside of the 
absolute value bars tell us two things. Not only is the graph flipped downwards, but again, the dilation is the same. Negative one, in this case, works in terms of dilation the same as positive one. I already went ahead and made this a solid line because we have the inequality symbol is less than or equal to. So then we can safely use a solid line. And the less than part of our inequality symbol indicates to us that our solutions are all this shaded part. But remember, the line itself this time is also part of the solution. While in our blue graph on the left, the line itself is not part of the solution. That's really what the difference between the solid line and the dashed line are supposed to tell us. The last thing we're going to do today is to look at a solution set on a number line and to go from there to come up with the original equation. Now here we have a solution set that says all numbers between negative 1 and positive 5. The way we do this is at first we look for the center of that line and the center is right here. We want to use numbers to figure this out. We find out that the center of the solution set is at positive 2 and that means that we have to write our absolute value portion x minus 2. And now we're going to look at the spread. How far to the left and to the right does a solution set go? And as you can see, the spread is 3 on both sides. And now since we are inside of those two borders, negative 1 and positive, and positive 5, the inequality symbol has to be is less than, and the open circle indicates that it's actually not equal to. The absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 3. That is the inequality whose solutions are shown here on this number line. Let's look at the next example. Again, we're going to go from negative 3 and find the number that's right in the middle, right in the center. That's negative 1. Make sure that you remember to switch your sign. And you've got the absolute value portion x plus 1. We're looking at numbers that are further away, and remember, absolute value means distance. Absolute value means distance, so further away means is greater than, and our closed circles tell us that the numbers themselves are also part. So now, what is the spread? How far out do we go from our center? We go two steps in both directions. The absolute value of x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2. Alright, now go ahead and just write a 20-word summary about the things you learned in this lesson, and I will see you in class.